This video will be about how you can engrave metal like a pro using a home laser engraver. If you stick with me, I'll tell you how. Those dedicated individuals who consistently follow my channel have undoubtedly already been thoroughly introduced to the remarkable Ortur Air 2, which is Ortur's brand new, fully enclosed, and completely boxed laser engraver and cutter device. In the previous video where I covered this machine, we tried out the blue laser head. With the blue laser head, we cut and engrave softer materials. But here's the thing, in addition to the blue laser, you can also buy an infrared laser for this machine, as well as for many other auto machines. So, not a blue laser, but one that operates in the infrared or at least near infrared wavelength. When you buy the machine, you can purchase it with a head like this. This is a standard blue laser, or another type that's 10 watts. I tried out the 20 watt version. However, you can also buy this 1.3 watt head for it, which operates at a wavelength of 1064 nanometers in the near infrared range. Why is this good? Well, for several reasons. One reason is that its power output is very low, so it can be installed in older Ortur machines as well. In the Laser Master 2, the Laser Master 2 Pro, the Laser Master 3, and even its little sibling, the Ortur Air 1. The point of this is, and that's why lower power is needed, or rather lower power is sufficient, because metals absorb this near-infrared wavelength much better, so even with much less power, enough heat can be generated on the surface of the metal. Basically, this works the same way as the blue laser, so these don't cut the material like scissors, nor do they grind it like a file, instead they vaporize or burn the material, and this single 1.3 watt head is capable of working even with steel. Obviously it can't cut, but it engraves beautifully. The head operating in the infrared wavelength is also great because it reflects less as it is absorbed better, but this reduced reflection means that on shiny surfaces where you can no longer work effectively with a blue laser, you can still do so with the infrared one. Of course, this also has its limits, and I'll talk about that a bit later. But first, let me explain how to install this head into the machine. Actually, this is the only thing that a lot of people have complained about, because the original blue laser head is pretty heavily wired into the machine. We have two cables on this side, and one cable on this side, which need to be disconnected, and there's also the air assist tube inside the machine that needs to be detached. But as if that wasn't enough, uh, this cable is also fastened to the rail, to the bridge where the head moves, with zip ties so it doesn't get caught on anything, and those also need to be cut off. This is a hassle because it means that with every single head swap, you should really reattach the cable with a zip tie, either this one or the other head's cable, so it doesn't dangle into everything or get caught on something during operation. And this, as you can see, is far from ideal. I think there could have been a more practical solution than this. There are self-adhesive cable holders that could have been stuck on, and you could have snapped these things into them. But let's leave it at that. Let this be the biggest problem. Actually, replacing the head itself doesn't take long. So if you cut the cable ties and remove the cables, then all you have to do is put this on and secure this one cable, connect it to its place. It doesn't take more than two minutes, and putting it back on is about two minutes as well. So the whole process doesn't take much time. Once you're done with this, you can basically start using the machine. There's one thing you need to pay attention to. As I already mentioned in the previous video, there's a limit switch inside that you need to adjust because this head is bigger than this one. And if you use this head, the maximum material size you can insert is only 190 millimeters. If you use this head, then the maximum is 210 millimeters. And you can adjust this by loosening the stopper for the limit switch inside, moving it over and tightening it again. Once you've done this, everything will be set correctly. By the way, in the app, you can change the type of head so that the app handles it correctly. So from a blue laser to a full three tenths of a watt infrared laser. So it's not complicated at all, neither the setup nor the use. I should also mention that the manufacturer provides a small L-shaped profile. This serves as the spacer, which sets the focal distance from the material to be engraved. Using it is very simple, you just need to place it under the head. The material you want to engrave will be underneath, the head will be above, and this sets the focal distance that will provide the best performance. What materials can be engraved? Well, I tried it on three types of materials, aluminum, red copper, and steel. I would have thought that aluminum would be the easiest since it's a relatively soft metal, so I set a relatively high carriage speed and relatively low laser power, which resulted in barely scratching the surface of the sheet. I'll try to show you this now. Well, you can see that there isn't much of a pattern on it, so I set the laser a bit stronger and slowed down the carriage, and the result got a little better.
But even so, it's still not perfect. And the reason for this is that the aluminum sheet reflects light quite strongly. Even though I said that metals absorb infrared light better, which is actually true, but very reflective surfaces still aren't perfect, or at least they don't look so good that I would highlight this as a positive feature of the machine. But with steel, it's a completely different story. Steel absorbs light beautifully, and it's very important to mention here that you can experiment a lot with it, because depending on how strong you set the laser's power, you can change the color of the engraving. The stronger you set it, the bluer it gets, and the weaker, the grayer it becomes, and in the middle, it takes on a kind of brownish shade. I'll show you this as well. First, I'll show you one that was made with lower laser power. And then I'll show you one that was made with higher power. You can see that with the lower power, the engraving turned out a bit grayer, while with the other one, it became more blackish brown. The whole thing turned out really great. The inscriptions are perfectly readable, even on the tank. You can see the tiny ventilation holes on the brake discs. Everything about the engraving on steel turned out absolutely professional. So this is definitely good in every way. And I saved copper for last which well, in my opinion, of course. Obviously, because of its properties and color, copper is always a very rewarding material. You can engrave really cool graphics on it. I engraved a motorcycle motif on this one as well. I don't know how well the video conveys it. I also wrote an article about this, and in the article I photographed these works in somewhat better quality, so you can check there to see what they look like in real life in a bit better quality than what you see here in the video. Quick conclusion. So the main point is that with a relatively small investment, you can buy a pretty professional head for this machine. And as I mentioned, also for the older Ortur machines, since this head only has a total power of 1.3 watts, so the electronics of the older machines will easily be able to handle it as well. If you buy this head, you'll be able to engrave metals with it, and in particularly good quality. You can play with the colors, so you can also do color engraving, for example, on a steel plate, especially if you use a thinner plate, not one as thick as the one I'm using. Uh, there's copper, aluminum, you can engrave on all kinds of surfaces, from teaspoons to ladles, from nail clippers to tie pins, even on a painted aluminum tag for your dog. So basically, with this head, you'll be able to do anything that's metal. So the whole point is that if you buy a machine like this for yourself, or if you have an older auto machine, it might be worth considering investing in this new type of head, a full 0.3 watt head suitable for engraving metals, because you'll be able to give your machine a completely new capability with it. And it doesn't even cost too much, since you already have the base machine. Well, that's all I wanted to say in this video. Of course, you'll find the link in the video description on YouTube where you can purchase it. If I have a coupon for it, I'll include that as well, so you can buy it at a lower price. I'll recommend the manufacturer's website for the purchase, so you'll be covered with the warranty and everything else there. There won't be any issues with that. I'll be back soon with another video. Until then, take care of yourselves, subscribe to the channel, and if you like this video, check out one of the other two videos that appear next to it. Bye!